I'm Gary Phillips. I live in Silcope, North Carolina, but I grew up about an hour down the mountain, and all my mother's folks are from Yancey County in the high mountains. This presentation began with my finding a small sheaf of mysterious photographs in my mother's chest of drawers and our conversation about that. Up in the mountains where I'm from, there's a ball that's old and round. And from its top you can see the world, folks call it naked ground. Folks call it naked ground. Grandpa Holloway loved to hunt coon, and he run beautiful black and tan hounds. Sometimes he would collect me from the little side porch room I slept in and loose the dogs. And we would roam the deep night together for hours. Up mountain, down valley. Up mountain, down valley. Grandma Etta was kind of a hill witch, all shy and wild. It was from her that most of the Cherokee come into the Holloways, and I have a secret cunning that was transmitted directly from her to me. She's my reminder ghost that I come from a people, not just a circumstance. What is memory? Memory is a stew placed over an open fire to percolate and bubble and make something of itself. Sometimes that fire is called the soul, but the stew is who we are. I know about memory that it is not linear, like a road, but more like a vast boulder field of treasure and regret. I know that not even a photograph tells a tale, but merely implies it. For the tale includes the relationship between the teller and the seen or unseen listener. And the relationship between the listener and all the tales that construct who they are. That's my dad there with his sister Ethel. Now we come to a photograph from 1955. Me and my sweet cousin Norma are running off to explore some wild side stream of White Oak Creek or the French Broad River. We live between nature and nurture with a huge Appalachian multiracial family and wildness at every hand. Memory is an old fence row running off to a mysterious location, more landmark than destination and never ever the same place twice no matter how vigorously remembrance imitates itself. Grandma and Grandpa Phillips were sharecroppers, one of the hardest ways to make a living in this world. She come from the Prices out of South Carolina, and her family was all over the color line, and she was one of my best friends in the world, Lily Price Phillips. Here's Grandma and Aunt Zilly coming in from the barn. This photograph was taken in the 1930s. Zilly was 13 at the time. When I showed my dad this picture, he got misty and said, that cow raised me. <laughs> this sweet, strange creature is Nell, a cotton mule who entered my father's life when he was six years old and died after I went to college. He plowed a garden with her for over 30 years, beans, corn, okra, potatoes, molasses cane, turnip greens, cabbages, tomatoes, onions, pinto beans. Along the brittle, treacherous, bright streets of memory comes my heart, singing like an idiot, whispering like a drunken man, E.E. E. Cummings. By the way, that's me with my brother Carol. I don't know where this is, but it reminds me of a place we killed hogs every fall. People would come from all around to help process the meat, bringing their own knives and tools. My Aunt Eulala would cook up potloads of chitlins, and I would run from the slaughter and the smell, hiding for hours. Ah, memory, what happens when it flies or scatters like a covey of quail? FDR was famous for saying no man or force can abolish memory. But we know him to be at least partly wrong. A thousand reasons, accident, dementia, fear, can wound memory and make it hide or adopt elaborate disguises. 
That little girl is my mother. I know that much. Wendell Berry says that our memory of ourselves hard-earned is one of the land's seeds as a seed is the memory of the life of its kind in its place to pass on into life the knowledge of what has died. How often do we picture the way ahead and dream of it and plan? But the actual road is never the dreamed one and the sights we set out to see are never the scenes that we remember. It is not the cathedral that lives, it is something else, the sudden and the unexpected. Not the great framed thing, but a mist, an expression on a face, a whisper. Often it is the fragile things of a moment that never die. The lines of a mountain lie in the mind, a sunset never fades, a peach blossom never shatters. The light of a star shines on. And there is a dim glimmer of the distant lightning and the good that one has done and the evil. It is regret that never dies. Like other Southerners, I have known from the start that we would be obliged to find what it is we look for, not outside of ourselves, but inside ourselves. This is a picture of my Uncle Junie and a friend sometime after World War II a couple of naked men with dogs in their laps. <laughs> I don't know a thing about the picture or what the story is, but I'd love to find out. <laughs> Finally, memory is sometimes just one bird of thought, one clear and compelling image that drives its way to the heart and makes a home, like the slip edge of dawn at the ruined fortress of Masada with the Dead Sea spread out like a blanket. I was there, I remember. Thank you.